Signalis is an epilogue of a love story that bent the cosmos. A finale to a love so strong that even reality curved beneath its will. As of such, the ending to the game is truly the final page of the story of this love. However, there are multiple endings, each with a different conclusion. And it was once stated by the devs that each of the endings are good in their own right, and that no one ending is the correct or good ending. I've explored the meaning of that from a lower perspective in the past. However, Signalis is an innately emotional game, so to truly understand its endings, one must analyse them from an emotional direction, rather than a purely objective angle. So in today's video, I wish to analyse memory from an emotional direction, and explain why this ending could easily be the greatest of the three. Not only to help those who don't understand the value of this ending, but also to express my personal feelings regarding it. To begin, to understand memory, we must first quickly review what occurs in it. Obviously, spoiler warning, if you haven't finished the game, go do so right now. Now, Signalis is clearly a game about the love between Elster and Arion, a love so strong it seemed to bend even the flow of time itself. This love is articulated blatantly by the flashback sequence, by Elster's never-ending search for her lover, and by Elster's final actions just wanting to be with her lover. It is also articulated indirectly, be it by the hints that the loops and distortions are of Arion's pain, a roaming desire to bend reality so she can have what she so needs back with her. However, for as hard as both of our protagonists fight, they are ultimately against an impossible odds, those being the finality of death. We know that Arion is violently sick, her body ridden with cancer and kept alive only via prolonged time in cryostances. We also know that Elster is dead, not just within the cycle countless times, but also seemingly before the cycles even began, that she fell ill and died and broke a promise to her lover. Their time together is still precious to them both, shown by the distortion of reality itself, but ultimately nothing can surmount the strength of death. These explanations, however, fail to really articulate why memory could be good, or even impactful. To get to this, we must remember a line from the shores of eternity. For there be several sorts of death, somewhere the body remain. It is this that we see here. For Arion is dead in spirit, now just a body with a mind that is long removed from the lover that Elster so stalled. For Arion, her suffering is over now. For she is just a lost mind without the soul that sought the release of death. This dynamic grants Elster a way to end her suffering as well. It is remarked in Arion's diary that she worried that she would be saying goodbye to Elster for the last time, and that she wasn't sure if she was doing it right. It is this ending which grants the best goodbye of the three, 
Foreign leave, Elster doesn't get to say goodbye to her lover, and in promise, this final memory is filled with pain. Instead of suffering and bringing their love story to a violent end, memory makes it a gentle conclusion, much like the gentle love that they felt for each other. Arion placing her hand on Elster's head, I believe, ultimately explains this best. Elster gets to have the solace of being with the one she loves the most in her final moments, before much like her lover's soul, passing on, ending her torment.